Hi, I am Dr. Samrat Jankar. Today we will see in colorectal update 3 about simplified anatomy for the fistula surgery and different fistula patterns and their operative options. It's very difficult to talk about the fistula without taking name of Professor Alan Park. He has rightly told it's impossible to perform the operation without accurate anatomical knowledge. This is particularly true in case of fistula and anno where intemperate surgery can lead to disastrous result. It may land in incontinence or recurrence. Both are not acceptable. I was fortunate enough in last one year to learn the fistula concept from the two master Dr. Parvez Sheikh and Dr. Arun Rajnasukal. In fact, Dr. Arun Rajnasukal has shared his material along with information told to share with others. Disclosure The concept explained in this video are of Dr. Arun Rajnasukal. The cadaveric dissection images and classification picture are belongs to Dr. Arun Rajnasukal sir. Uh, the presentation of fistula we will divide into four. Initially, we will talk about the simplified anatomy, fistula patterns and their operative options. In later presentation, we can see anal fistula mapping and our one year of experience. Simplified anal spinter anatomy pertaining to fistula surgery has been published by Dr. Arun Rajna Sukal and their group in International Journal of Colorectal Disease based on more than 100 of cadaveric dissection over last 10 years. Anal anatomy for fistula and anal surgery simply divided into three parts. First is anogenital muscle, anogenital fascia and anogenital spaces. If we know about these three, most of the part is done. Anogenital muscles. The internal spinter of anal canal is a continuation of circular muscle of rectum. External spinter is a continuation of levator and that we know very well. But after multiple cadaver dissection, they found out that external spinter is having only two component, the subcutaneous and superficial part. The deeper part which has been mentioned in many literature which they found there is no distinct demarcation between the levator ana and deep part. In fact, they propose that it is nothing but the levator ana only. Further to simplify, they have given the concept of three levels of anogenital striated muscle. Upper is levator, middle is superficial external sphincter and lower is subcutaneous external sphincter. Lower level is subcutaneous external sphincter. This can be divided without fear of incontinence in any case of fistula surgery. Middle level is superficial external sphincter. It can be divided in most of the fistula surgery except in case of the female anterior fistula, a recurrent type of fistula associated with IBD. In those cases, the sphincter preserving surgery warranted. But definitely upper level is levator and it should not be divided in any patient at any cost because it can lead to incontinence. Here in this cadaver we can see the distinct part of the external spinters. Upper part is levator and there is no distinct deeper part of the external spinter followed by the superficial external spinter and the subcutaneous external spinter. Anogenital fascias. The interspintic fascia in between the two spinter, the fascia which is running transversely in between the superficial and subcutaneous part is a transversal fascia. The oblique fascia is dividing lateral space into the upper infralevator and lower ischioanal fossa is the ischioanal fossa fascia. Here we can see the cadaveric dissection to demonstrate the different fascias. This one is a transverse septum fascia. This one is a ischioanal fossa fascia. We can compare this one oblique fascia. Ischioanal fossa fascia dividing this space as a ischioanal space and upper space is a infralevator space. 
there are many different anogenital phases around the anal canal those we need to understand and we need to drain during surgery for anogenital sepsis the space in between the two sphincter is a intersphincteric space the space around the perianal is a perianal space and anteriorly is a perineum space the space posterior to the anal canal is a post anal space the space above the levator is a supralevator below the levator is a infralevator and below the ischioanal fossa fascia is ischioanal space the abscesses pertaining to different spaces in between the two sphincter is a intersphincteric abscess the abscess on the perianal region is a perianal abscess anteriorly is a perianeum abscess the posteriorly is a deep postanal abscess above the levator is supralevator below the levator is infralevator in between the transversalis fascia and ischioanal fossa fascia is a ischioanal fossa abscess a different fistula patterns and their operative options the concept given by dr arun rajna sukal sir we'll see in next few slide we very well know that the perianal sepsis start at the dentate line it crosses the internal sphincter track in the downward direction leads to formation of the low intersphincteric fistula if it tracks in the upward direction in the intersphincteric space it forms the high intersphincteric fistula the perianal sepsis starting at the dentate crossing the both sphincter the superficial or subcutaneous part of the external sphincter reaching to the perianal region is a low transphincteric fistula anteriorly if the abscess starting at the dentate line crossing the both sphincter specifically above the level of the superficial external sphincter reaching to the ischial space and reaching to the perianal space that is the anterior high transphincteric fistula if the abscess starting at the dentate going through the both the sphincter reaching to the deep postanal space and from there it is reaching either infralevator or ischial to the perianal space that is the posterior high transphincteric fistula low intersphincteric type where abscess starting at the dentate crosses the internal sphincter forming the abscess in the intersphincteric region or it tracks downward open in the perianal region this is the low intersphincteric type we very well know that best option for that is fistulotomy the high intersphincteric type where the dentate line abscess starting which crosses the internal sphincter goes in the upward direction from the supralevator abscess this type warrant the sphincter preserving surgery in those cases we can do the lift surgery or we can divide the internal sphincter till the level of the puborectalis that is intraanal fistulotomy the fistula starting at the level of dentate crossing the both sphincter lower part of the external sphincter forming the abscess or external opening in the perianal space that is a low transphincteric type in those cases fistulotomy is the best option but in some scenario where sphincter need to be preserved the sphincter preserving procedure either lift flap or fistulotomy with sphincter repair will be the options anterior high fistula where the fistula starting at the dentate crossing the internal sphincter higher part of the external sphincter reaching to the perianal space either forming abscess at the dent uh, abscess at the infralevator or at the level of issue anal or at the level of perianal and forming the perianal opening those kind of the fistula in this type if we divide the external sphincter which leads to the incontinence so sphincter dividing surgery fistulotomy should be avoided sphincter preserving surgery either lift flap or fistulotomy with sphincteroplasty are the better option posterior high transphincteric fistula are the fistula start at the level of dentate crossing the internal sphincter intersphincteric space external sphincter at the higher level reaching to the deep postanal space and goes either on one side or both side reaching to the infralevator space ischial space and perianal space in this type the crossing occurs at the higher level of the external sphincter this kind of fistula if we consider for the 
fistulotomy which will cause the incontinence so definitely these cases needs the spinter preserving surgery either in the form of lift flap fistulotomy spindroplasty or henle's modified henle's fistulotomy there is another complicated pattern where it has two component one is the posterior high transpentric fistula pattern and along with the high interspentric fistula pattern these two pattern when combined comes it will be the most complex pattern where we will see the abscess kind of horseshoe one side horseshoe or both side horseshoe along with interspentric abscess high interspentric abscess and drainage of the track crossing of the track at the higher external sphincter in those cases it is a uh, difficult to manage definitely these cases a uh, primary fistulotomy should be avoided a sphincter preserving procedure had warranted in these cases and it can be a lift with tube drainage of the abscess cavity or intranal fistulotomy with suturing of the external sphincter outside that is e lift can be the alternative in short we have to understand the different fistula pattern based on the fistula pattern we have to plan for the operative options low interspentric fistula fistulotomy is the best in fact fistulotomy is the best surgery for any kind of fistula except where the sphincter at risk of incontinence we need a sphincter preserving surgery it can be anything few of the good option for particular pattern we can advise here if it is a high interspentric we can plan for the lift or intranal fistulotomy if it is a low interspentric fistulotomy lift flap or fistulotomy with spintroplasty if it is anterior high transpentric we can do the lift flap fistulotomy with spintroplasty if it is a posterior high transpentric lift flap fistulotomy with spintroplasty or modified henle's fistulotomy if it is a combined pattern we can consider for lift with a fistulotomy with spintroplasty intra anal fistulotomy with e lift that is suturing of the fistula track outside the external sphincter these are the better options thank you for watching comment criticism or any suggestion are most welcome